from Best Trains again. This is our uh, video on O-scale trees that we're going to be making. This is the type of tree. Uh, this particular tree I made 22 years ago. So they, uh, they're pretty sturdy. They, they hold up well if they're treated right. And the reason being that uh, we're going to be making trees is because this is what can be bought. There's, there's lots of trees on the market, but this is from Grand Central Gems. And as nice as this is, it is a $40 item. So it's real hard to make a forest when, uh, when the trees are real expensive. So uh, I will show you what $40 can get you with this type of tree versus what you can buy at the hobby shop or even online. And I think $40 is an online price. So uh, anyway, that's what we're going to do. And we'll, uh, we'll run through the steps real quick. And then from there, we'll, we'll take it from step one all the way to the completed tree. And the, the trees that we're going to make are going to be about 15 inches, which would simulate a 60-foot pine tree. So let's get started. I'm going to go over the materials that we need in the order that we will probably use them. Uh, so first off, you need to get some dowels. And you can this is a scrap dowel that I had laying around. But you can get some dowels at Home Depot, Ace Hardware, most any hardware store, some hobby stores. Uh, but you can also get them at floral stores if uh, it's a big enough floral store. And chances are, sometimes at the floral store, they're actually cheaper. And uh, there's one up by, by where I live, and uh, they're, they're already uh, the color green. So uh, judging on your taste, that could be an option. So we got the dowel, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get some nails and we're going to clip off the head, and I prefer finished nails. So it, it's handy to have a uh, drill guide. So we would put the, uh, the nail in the bottom of the dowel, and that, later that will serve as an anchor for your layout. Now on a pine tree, most of the growth is at the top, so it's a little thinner. So overall, except for the top, it's about the same size. So we could just take a knife and thin out that top a little bit. Um, I have a belt sander. I know not everybody has a belt sander. That's what I'm going to use. Uh, so at that point, we'll take a rasp file. And this is just a, a regular file that's just really, really coarse. And we're going to run it up and down the, the trunks. And that will give us the, uh, the bark of the pine tree effect. So once that is done, you'll need some stain. Dark stain probably works best, and I'm going to stain the whole thing, but the, the, if you don't want to do that, that's fine. Uh, you won't have to, but the, the top and the bottom are really important that you do get stain on those areas. So we'll move to the actual branch medium. Uh, we're going to use two different types. I'm going to make one tree with the cocoa liner. This is coconut husk. I'll make a tree combined with this and this other medium which is furnace filter medium. And uh, this is a natural type material. The, they do have nylon uh, furnace medium, but I don't think it looks as good and it's, it's not you know, organic. This actually is, uh, I'll get a picture of it. This is actually already the color green, so that's, that's a big benefit. So we'll cut out different shapes of that and we will spray the dowel with uh, 3M adhesive and uh, we'll move it along the, the trunk of the tree and that will give us a different effect. So that'll be cut in different patterns. And then once we're all done with that, we're gonna spray it with a dark green color. You don't have to use the spray paint, but you know, since we're doing the green thing, uh, you could use dark green or you could also just use clear coat and uh, we're going to spray that all over our tree and uh, then we're going to hit it with some uh, some foam first dark and then light and then to finish it off we'll take the clear coat and just spray it all over the tree and that will uh, tighten it up and then at the end we're going to take a fine brush with a uh, possibly a gray color and just hit the trunk a little bit to bring out some highlights so so that's our course of action that's our plan so let's get started with step one. All right, so step one will be drilling the hole in the bottom. And there's the price sticker 
tags that we have to get rid of. Um, that's always a pain. But, uh, a little uh, MEK, which is a solution that you can find in the paint section at uh, your hardware store. And it'll take anything that's sticky right off. So we'll, uh, we'll do all these and uh, go on to the next step. So the drill I was using is a 764 size drill and this is just a galvanized nail that uh, fit into that hole for the drill. This is a drill guide and it, they don't, they, it's not real important that the nail has to be straight. It's just there to give you support when you uh, put it into your layout. So that's, uh, that's really the only function. Uh, that it's going to serve so it doesn't have to be perfectly straight and the hole doesn't have to be perfectly center. So our next step we're going to use a belt sander and trim these uh, tops here a little bit so I get that tree look to it. So that'll be the next step. So now that we have the uh, proper trim on these pieces, uh, it's going to be a slow process, but you take the brass file and just keep going over this and over this until you get a uh, nice texture that looks like a tree trunk. Try to get some close-ups of this. You spend about five minutes on each piece, so. So, um, if you have about 12 pieces, and you spend about five minutes on each one, so that's going to take you an hour to do about 12. But the, uh, the effect of this file on the wood really does give it a uh, look as though it's a tree trunk. And the, the rougher pieces there actually looks like bark coming off it or maybe parts of the tree. But uh, I will try to get a snapshot close-up of this. And this is probably something that's better done outside. It does rather uh, leave a lot of mess. So, I, and I didn't put the nails in because since we're handling this, that nail is just going to cause problems. So I would, at this point, I would glue the nail in and then uh, stain this piece. So we'll do all those, which is going to be a little bit of a time-consuming effort, and then uh, we'll get back to the next step after that. We have the furnace filter medium and you're going to want to cut up a, a bunch of circles and I've, I've got them all sketched out here. I left this area open so when I when I start putting the trees together if, if I need larger or smaller I'll, uh, I'll have some extra area to work with. So uh, once you got them all cut in circles you want to cut them into patterns like this just random branch uh, shapes and uh, this is a this is one cut in a square it'll still work uh, and you really won't notice it when you when you put it on your your pole here but uh, it is it is square so uh, I, I would stay away from the square cuts this this looks a little more natural and uh, I've got one cut here that I, I did separate so you get like two for one on that one 
and then uh, what we're what we're gonna do we'll leave about maybe 10 scale feet for the the first branch we'll we'll spray the uh, the adhesive in this direction and uh, actually we'll spray some right here move this down spray a little bit more take our next piece move that down but you want to kind of get all your pieces lined up for your tree first and uh, once you're happy with the way it looks then you you know scoot them all off here and then you can just start spraying uh, putting your branches on spray a little bit more that way you're a little organized this is the coconut husk medium and uh, you actually can work with this a, a little bit more and this would be uh, put on in the same way but I'd, I'd, I'd leave them like this and then put the adhesive on and once that dries then you could kind of work the the coconut uh, husk there into more uh, branch shapes uh, it's, this is two, two entirely different uh, uh, branch mediums that you're going to work with and you're going to have to deal with them in different ways uh, this is this is pretty stiff so and uh, the only hard part on these is, is actually separating them and I would use maybe a pair of scissors or some type of knife to uh, to gently separate this into two equal pieces so uh, I'll get some video of, of making a couple of trees and uh, we'll see how that goes we have our first tree here and it's trimmed out uh, it doesn't have to be perfect so what we're going to do we're going to remove the branches in order and then we're going to apply the adhesive so let's do that now I'm wearing gloves so the adhesive doesn't get on my hands but also I want to protect this area we really don't want any adhesive on there The trees are a little different than the ones I made earlier. They were smaller and there wasn't as much trunk showing. So, uh, let's straighten these up a little bit. So we're going to have to be a little more careful when we apply the uh, foam coloring. Now it looks like we have a, a Christmas tree or a tree in winter, so we'll just put this on. Try to most of it to land in the uh, container so we can reuse it. go back and touch it up but that is pretty much it right there um, let's see if I can touch it up a little bit so we'll uh, put some more foam on here drop it off put some more foam okay so uh, that's kind of one of them right there maybe more on top Okay. Now it's always good to have styrofoam, but you can use a box to uh, to put these in to dry. Kind of knock it off a little bit here. Put some more on. So uh, not too bad. So now what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I have some more foam, and I'm gonna move this out of the way. And this is optional personal preference but what you can do is uh, you can lighten I'm sorry you can put some more adhesive on there or just spray uh, flat clear and uh, just touch it up with maybe a little bit of light foam on there again this is flat don't really want to use gloss 
And see how this is just sitting down here? You could leave it like that because a lot of times pine trees do do that. Or you could just lift it up and let it dry that way. So uh, let's just uh, try a little bit of this. You have a little bit of a, a two-tone effect there. Of course, the wind's not helping. Uh, so you can let it dry like this or dry like that, but uh, might be better to let it dry like this. Get those branches stiffen up by the clear coat. And again, I would I would spray this really really liberally. Hard word to say. And that'll that'll just tighten all that foam up in there, and uh, should last for quite a quite a long time. And you can always freshen these trees up too, just by reapplying some foam. But there's one of our trees done, so we're just gonna let that be, let it dry, and we'll start another one. It's a bit of a windy day, but. My first tree, that's how much foam turf I went through. Uh, and again, it's a little windy and I'm outdoors, so I probably wouldn't use as much as I did, but uh, I don't know if that can be seen on the camera. But anyway, it's, it's right here. So our tree here, I, uh, I taped it up here, so there's gonna be a lot of spraying and this tape is gonna protect that. And we have all our pieces cut out and in order. is the coconut husk and what we're gonna do with this I'm gonna, I have two I'm gonna show you one way I'm gonna show you another uh, we're gonna spray this one the the correct way by taking all these off and then we're gonna use green spray paint to color it or you could color it on the ground the way it is now sometimes you have to get a couple of pieces and overlap it because it just doesn't doesn't have the firmness that the uh, furnace filter has, so I'm going to spray this real generously. Put that on and move on to the next one. And we're just going to use some green spray paint. Trying to avoid the trunk there. If you shoot it this way, you can get a lot of it without worrying about that trunk. If you uh, you miss some of the brown, that's not a big deal because a lot of times pine tree branches turn brown. You can see you meant to do that if anybody says anything. Now the good thing about the green spray paint is that it's sticky right now. So we can go right into our foam. Now one thing with the foam, the shakers 
for big applications don't always work as well. So you can refill it in a Dixie cup or the red cup, and in this case it's the blue cup. And uh, so then you got another tree. And highlight it with the lighter color foam. And uh, like I said before, you could tape this. It doesn't really matter. It actually will brush off. But uh, what you can do here, again, is go over it with a clear coat just to tighten all that up. And again, I'm going to hang these upside down. This one probably not too important. But nonetheless, I'll dry upside down. So this is one of the coconut husk trees. And this tree, all we're going to do on this one right now is attach the branches with the 3M adhesive. And we're going to let that set up. Then we're going to come back and we're going to work the coconut husk into more uh, natural shapes. This is the part where you can choose to or not to uh, put a little highlights on the trunk. And this is how you do it. You make sure your brush is really dry and just kind of glide it over the grain here a little bit until you start getting some highlights. You also put some, uh, some yellow into this mix that uh, might give it a little bit more of a different season look. So that's pretty much it. And I'll, I'll try to get a close-up picture, a freeze frame, of one of these. But uh, the trick is having a dry brush. And I'm, I'm applying it now on this piece. Uh, so you don't have to mess with the, uh, the tree branches. It's a little easier to, to do it at this point. Um, so you got some of the brown coming through and then you got uh, the gray highlights. But like I said, you could even add some, uh, some yellow to this. Well, the next step is enjoying your trees. The $40 internet tree or $40 worth of trees. I wanted to be 100% transparent in this video. So $40 yielded 14 trees. I did have some things left over. I had 10 tree trunks and the foam and some adhesive. So uh, it's really hard to get exactly your $40 worth and not have any leftovers. But anyway, I will leave my email in the comment section. If you have any questions at all, please contact me in uh, questions for this video or any other video as well. So next time we're going to be tackling uh, building a mountain with a tunnel through it. And for me, it's the most enjoyable part of building a layout. So I hope you join me next time. Please don't forget to subscribe. And uh, when you do subscribe, if you're a subscriber, the next time I post a video, it will pop up. So that's why it's important. So thanks again. We'll see you next time on Best Trains.